Hey everyone and welcome back to another video by Game Dev Journey. The long-term goal of this playlist is going to be ultimately to create the game you see in front of you. This is just level one, but um, we will have a playable character with animations such as a double jump here, fall, you know, walk, run, uh, you'll be able to wall slide, um, there'll be collectibles, um, enemies you can kill, uh, a health bar, and uh, platforms that you can fall through, and when you collect all the collectibles you can touch the flag and we'll have a little confetti. We'll also add in music and so on, I haven't done that yet, and of course we've got the scrolling background. All the assets for this little 2D platformer that we're going to make come from Pixel Frog's itch.io page and specifically I'm using the Pixel Adventure assets and you can see the different scrolling backgrounds for instance that's what we're going to be using so you can head over there download it's all in the public domain so you're free to use these assets as you please all right before we begin I'd just like to show you I'm using Godot version 4.3 stable and we're going to start just by setting up the display properties so I'm going to go to project project settings we're going to head over to display window and I'm going to change the settings to 854 by 480 and the reason is I've played around with these numbers already and it's just what looks best um, I'm going to allow it to be resizable. Uh, the stretch mode is going to match the viewport. So you'll be able to stretch to those values. Keep the aspect ratio. Um, and I don't think we need to do anything else here. One thing you may want to do while we're here is if you go to textures, change the default texture filter to nearest just so that your pixel art doesn't look blurry. Then you can close that window and we'll go ahead and get our background images. So I'm gonna go ahead and import all of the assets from the Pixel Frog folder, from the backgrounds folder into Godot over here. I'm going to neaten things up by creating a new folder, calling it backgrounds and putting all these backgrounds um, in that folder just to keep things nice and neat right so what we now need to do is create a new scene so I'll go 2d scene there it is it's just a node 2d I'm going to rename this to background and we're going to add a child node which is a texture rect all that is is a textured rectangle and it basically just displays a texture so we'll create that and we'll leave that as it is and there it is now we can go to our background and we can use any of these images as the texture for the rectangle so let's go ahead and take this brown one and drag it in there and release and there we have it it is a 64 by 64 pixel square with a pattern on it and what we're going to do is change the stretch mode from scale to tile so that it tiles it across the entire viewport and with that we can just grab it and make it bigger than the viewport and you can make it as large as you like and uh, this is static at the moment nothing is going to uh, move yet we would uh, the only way we can make it move is by writing a script to do so in this case because the first way we're going to use is uh, with CPU rendering and what that means is just a traditional way of writing a script that will continuously update and reset the position of the tiles on the screen the work is done by the CPU and so if it was you know anything um, more graphically intensive it would have performance issues but this is not going to be any issue at all the other way we'll do it is with a shader and that runs on the GPU and so obviously it's going to be a lot faster. So let's go ahead and attach a script to our node. So we click on our primary node, click on add script, background.gd is fine, we'll click create 
and this is you know the default that we get now what we're going to need is a reference variable to the texture rect so that we can access the position property of the texture rect and the texture property optionally as well so what we can do here is create an on ready variable so we'll give it the on ready annotation on ready uh, var and we can go ahead and call it bg for background or, or um, type it up in full if you like and then we'll use the uh, reference shortcut or node shortcut and we'll go and grab the texture rec so now we have an, a way to access all the properties of this texture rect. What we should then do is record its the tiles starting x and y position. So we'll create variables to do that. Let's call it start x and start y. And um, you know these variables will keep track of where the tiles initial position was so that once the tile has moved a certain distance we can reset it to the starting position right so uh, in the ready function here as the scene becomes ready we can capture and store the current x position so we can set start x uh, to the background dot position dot x and the same for y so set start y to the background dot position dot y so now we know where the initial position of the x and y of the tile was now let's create a function to move the tiles okay so let's go ahead and type function let's call it move tiles so I'll say move underscore tiles and the way we'll move the tiles is diagonally to the left so up and to the left so we'll change the uh, position of the tiles x by minus one and we'll change the position of the y of the tiles by minus one so we'll say bg dot position dot x minus equals one and bg dot position dot y minus equals one that's going to move the tiles up and to the left as they go because we'll call this in the the process function so repeatedly they're going to go up and to the left but what we're going to have to do is reset them back to their original position after they've moved a certain distance now what is that distance well it's this it's the width of a tile so once the tile has moved 64 pixels to the left we'll reset it back to its original position and the way we're going to do that is we're going to say if the b the tiles position bg dot position uh, dot x is equal to the starting position uh, minus 64 then we will reset the position of the tile to its start position so bg dot position dot x will equal start x and bg dot position dot y will equal start y okay then all we have to do is actually call the tile to make it move um, call the move tiles function to make it uh, move so we can go in here and we can call move tiles and that should do it so if we test this now we'll select the current scene as the main and uh, we'll put it there for now run it and there we've got the moving tiles infinitely scrolling tiles using script so just to understand how this works, if we go back to 2D, zoom out here and make this just one tile large again, and say we put the tile there and run it, you'll see the tile moving 64 pixels up and then resetting to its original location. And because we've tiled it, this is happening to every single tile. So your eyes create the illusion that it is um, just happening all the time. So if we put this back in that position there, 
and we zoom out and we fill the entire screen and we run it again. Now you'll see that you've got that moving background and the illusion that the background is moving is maintained. We can now swap out any of these textures in the texture property. And when we run the game, we're going to see a different background. We can also swap these textures in code. And if you want to see how to do that in the ready function, we can load a texture. So what we can do is say bg dot texture equals load. And then we can actually look through all the textures here. And if we go and load the pink, for instance, when we run now, we're going to have the pink background. The next tutorial will be doing the exact same thing, but using shaders. See you next time.